Earlier this month, former Fox anchor Gretchen, Gretchen Carlson filed a lawsuit against Fox CEO Roger Ailes, one of the most powerful media executives, saying he sexually harassed her. Carlson claims that her career was sabotaged after she refused Ailes' sexual advances. And now there are allegations that Ailes also sexually harassed Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly. New York Magazine reports that Kelly told investigators Ailes made unwanted sexual advances toward her 10 years ago. Kelly has made no public comment about this, and Roger Ailes' lawyer is denying the accusation. Fox's parent company has brought in a New York law firm to investigate. Carlson's allegations have been met with both support and disbelief from the public. Amy Brooks is an attorney at Michael Best and Friedrich here in Madison and an expert on employment law. Welcome to Live at Four. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you. So what is allowed at the workplace and what is not? Well, it, discrimination is not allowed and harassment is a subset of discrimination. And so most people think of harassment as being sexual harassment, right? It's actually harassment of any type of protected category like race or disability. And, and if someone were picked on or made to feel less in the workplace because of one of those protected categories, that would be improper. Sexual harassment is, is interesting because sometimes we have to argue over what is welcome versus what is unwelcome. You know, mm -hmm. what is that maybe racy but inappropriate banter at the, at the water cooler versus what crosses the line to be inappropriate. And so um, what I, I advise employers on how to make sure their employees are being treated fairly and correctly in the workplace and what I advise them is to say let's follow what I would say in front of my grandmother rule which <laughs> is don't you know dare to be boring don't engage in, ty in those types of racy communications because even if at the time the person who's receiving the comments and questions if they appear to be participating it, it, maybe they're assimilating or maybe something is going to happen later in the workplace where they're going to say hey, that greatly offended me. I just didn't happen to say anything mm -hmm. at the time. Now, of course, Gretchen Carlson's allegations are far beyond mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but it, just in terms of trying to define what, what should and should not go on in the workplace, um, should be that racy line, avoiding, you don't say bomb in an airport. Right. And so yeah, a, a good workplace rule is a similar, just hold yourself to the standards of good commonplace decency in front of your grandmother communication. When it comes to sexual harassment, a lot of times it's a he said, she said situation. And like you said, a lot of it is subject to interpretation, especially if you get comfortable with your coworkers. What you may take as offensive, some other people may not feel like they intended it that way. But from a legal perspective, is sexual harassment a, har a high bar to reach, to prove? It, it, it is at a high enough level that there are arguments in courts about what it is. And really to be sexual harassment, it has to be two things. It has to be unwelcome, so the recipient is truly not welcome in the behaviors. And a good example of that is, you know, sometimes workplace romances are alive and well. And when both parties are welcome participants to a relationship, that's not sexual harassment. The second part is that if it's unwelcome, it still has to be targeted at a person because of their gender, and it has to be severe and pervasive. And when the courts talk about what severe and pervasive is, they mean sort of a sliding scale of both uh, a number of events or, and or that are particularly severe. Mm. So if there were an, were an allegation of touching, right, that would be a very serious allegation. That would almost always be harassment, even if it was only one event. But otherwise, sometimes sexual jokes and innuendo might not cross the line, but they start to get close. And certainly, once someone has indicated that they do not want to participate in any type of that banter, clearly laid down the charge that it's unwelcome, and someone comes back and continues to do so, that's an even higher risk situation that's more likely to be deemed uh, harassment. Does it matter if it's the boss or just a coworker? Oh, it matters a great deal as to whether it's the boss. Because Roger Ailes is the boss. That's exactly right. So there are different standards that are applied in terms of determining how someone would prove to a point of being able to win a court case, whether a supervisor's involved or just a, 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 a peer. And if it's a supervisor and the complainant or plaintiff is able to prove that it went on and it's severe enough that it impacted them tangibly, like they didn't get a promotion or 
Carlson is alleging that it ended her career, then it's strict liability. The employer really doesn't have any defenses when it's a supervisor that's involved. Mm. So it, it, it does make a difference. Now, the Fox case is an interesting one because here in Wisconsin, I advise employers, so here in Wisconsin, em coworkers can't be sued under the sexual harassment laws. Only the employer can be sued. New York's a different case. There's a New York law which allows uh, other employees to be sued, and that's why Roger Ailes is specifically named as a defendant in Carlson's case. As opposed to the company. Yes. Interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see how this, this all plays out. Yeah, you'll have to come back as the case progresses. We'll yes, continue please to invite me out. Right. I'm happy to discuss it. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Amy. Great right, to see thank you. Amy. Thank you.